Hi! It's been a while at this point, huh? Sorry about that, it's been really hard to find motivation for reasons I'll go into more detail about later. Almost a year ago now, I finished and uploaded my first true passion project, then titled Intro to Expert The Meta. I changed the title within an hour to the one it has now so it would more easily show up in search results for Expert MBM Guide. You can really tell how much confidence I had in it. With this video, I want to talk about basically everything I learned before, during, and after creating that video, and impart some of my knowledge onto you guys, since, uh, I'm pretty bad at using it myself. That's right, I, the guy with just over 13,000 subscribers, mostly off the back of one video, who hasn't uploaded in almost a year, and could barely be called a YouTuber, I'm gonna get up on my soapbox and teach you guys how to be YouTubers. At least, how I figure you do it anyway. I'm only somewhat joking, really. I want this to be a recurring series, talking about what I've learned as I learn more. That way you guys get to go on this journey with me wherever it takes us. I want this series to be filled with the kind of lessons that you don't really hear YouTubers talk about too often. You know, not the usual, don't read the comments, or just be yourself. It's not really going to be tips on how to edit, either. Instead, it's going to be more about the personal lessons, large and small, that I've learned over the course of my journey. And to start with, I'm going to drag you guys down the list of events that I've gone through so far. Our story begins way back in the long-forgotten age of May 2019. Way back before the world ended, and the most divisive election since, uh, the previous election. My favorite YouTuber at the time, best guy ever, decided to host a video creation contest. Everyone was given two weeks to make a video, on whatever they wanted so long as it was under five minutes, and submit it in the hopes of getting it showcased on his channel as one of the ten best entries. Anyone could join, but it was intended to be for super small creators who had nothing even resembling a following yet. Watching this top 10 back is truly inspiring. A lot of these guys are doing things that I don't even know how they did, period, let alone did in under two weeks. Best Guy Ever also included a Google Sheets document listing notes for every entrant, which is really above and beyond what I would expect from a project like this. I really respect what he says here. Because all these guys put skin in the game and actually made a fucking video and entered it in this contest, and that deserves our respect. Yeah, it is a big step to just have made something, and massive props to everyone who managed even that much. And now, forget the winners. In fact, forget most of the people on this list, they fucking suck. If we scroll down about three quarters of the way down the sheet, we get... Yup, that's me. That's right, I actually entered this competition. I will always and forever be thankful to Best Guy Ever for giving me the push I needed to get off my fucking ass and make something. He gave me my start and I will always be grateful for it. And I will forever be embarrassed about putting that at the end of the video I made. I mean really, god what the hell was I thinking? I bought Sony Vegas the day after the announcement video and got right to work. I worked on it for the full two weeks allotted, and I'm proud of the video that I made. Obviously this taught me the very basics of video editing, but also taught me a lot of things that only making a video with a length restriction can. One of which is that I have no idea how Dunkey gets across so much of how he feels in such a short amount of time. A page and a half of script is like five minutes when speaking for me, so good fucking luck getting what you want across in that time. Anyway, after slaving away over this video for two weeks, I had deluded myself into thinking that this video I made was somehow good. I thought that because I had made something, people would give me views and likes and I'd be super popular. I even thought I had a good chance of winning the competition with this video. And then I didn't make the top 10. Hell, I didn't even make honorable mentions. And even outside of the competition, the video only got like 60 views. Looking back on it, the video is really terrible. It's put together decently enough, but it's not really that entertaining, and I don't even agree with a lot of what's in it anymore. This video performing so poorly was a real punch in the face to me. I, I was so sure it would do well, and that it'd get me at least a few hundred subscribers. I mean, I did the thing. I put in effort. Where were all of my viewers? I earned them! Come, my sheep! Gather and pay respects! But they didn't come. Nobody came. And this taught me a valuable lesson. Nobody cares about you. And why should they? Just because you put your opinion into a video doesn't mean people have to watch it. Why would they listen to your opinion? Why are you so much more special than all the other people doing exactly the same thing on this website that anyone should bother paying attention to you? These are the kinds of things that you need to think about when you're starting out creating a YouTube channel. That's what's going to get you your audience. 
I walked away from this video a bit dejected, but with a newfound resolve. If people weren't going to care just because I put out a video, then I'd put out a video good enough to make them care. With newfound determination, I set out to make a video in the same vein as the last one, another review. I'd be reviewing one of my favorite games ever. This time, it'd be perfect. There was no need to restrict myself in terms of video length, nor was there a reason not to take as much time as I wanted in making it. I could make a video that was truly epic in scope, long enough to match the YouTubers that I look up to. Over a week later, I had the script done. 16 pages. Single spaced. And I was gonna put everything about the story in a second video, which would probably be about the same length. This was going to be my magnum opus, an in-depth review of a game that I love in the style of YouTubers that I love. Then I got to the editing phase. I recorded everything I needed. Hours of footage of me playing the whole game. Me reading the script. And then I just sat there and stared at it. Because I had no idea what I actually wanted it to look like. There were very few areas where I knew what the visual should be. Over 90% of the project was stuff I just had no ideas for. A tinge of anxiety. This couldn't be right. This was supposed to be the video that would get me noticed. This was my masterpiece. But the problems didn't stop there. I was doing a lot of analysis of videos that I loved when I realized, what was the point of this video? The entire thing was just kind of me listing mechanics and saying that I liked them, but nothing about why they were good, or more importantly, why anyone should care about either the game or my opinion. It was aimless and went nowhere. That anxiety starts growing stronger. Am I even capable of making something people will like? Should I just give up now? Am I doomed to never be like the people I respect? I started really digging into the content of the people I watched. What was it that I liked? How can I make my video better? What am I missing? Eventually, I realized I was missing a few key things. Take notes, these are the things that I think are most important in making a good script. The first is a story, point, or narrative through line that keeps the viewer engaged. An emotional attachment. People don't want to just listen to mechanics, they want a reason to care. Once you get them to care, then you can talk about mechanics and specifics, but if people don't care about the thing you're discussing, continuing to talk about it isn't going to keep them around. I had thought I could just have fancy editing and people would watch, but you need more than that before you even get to that stage. The next issue is that there was almost none of me in the video. My personality wasn't in the script at all, and that leads to a disconnect for the viewers. If I can't get a feel for the person behind the screen when watching a video, I'm probably gonna lose interest unless I already care about the topic being discussed. Stories about you, personal experiences, biases, more personality in general. And the final piece I was missing, possibly the most important piece, was humor. It was an issue with the Final Fantasy video too, my script was really dry and bland. Sterile even. What few jokes there were in this new video were spread out over the course of a 40 plus minute video, so it was super easy to lose interest. Now, it's not like this isn't a completely subjective list, it's just what I like to see in content creators. It's also not like a video needs all three of these to be successful, or like these are the only three things you need. My tutorial is a great example, while I think there's a lot of personality and some good humor, there's basically nothing in the way of a story because it's just a tutorial. It doesn't need a narrative because ideally the educational aspect, along with the humor and charm, should keep it engaging. Here are some examples of great channels that excel in one or two of these things but don't quite nail all of them. In addition, here are some channels that excel in factors outside of these three that make them entertaining despite having only one or sometimes none of the factors I just listed. In fact, two of my favorite channels only implement two of the three pieces I just mentioned. Only a tiny handful of the channels I follow really nail all three perfectly in my opinion. There's also a special zing factor, something that really resonates with people on an individual level that's important. That's the reason why despite all three of these guys nailing all three of the categories perfectly, only one stands above as my favorite, but that's a video for another day. The bottom line is that no matter how much I tried to edit around it, the script I had written just wasn't good. By this point I had sunk weeks of my life into this project, but still had basically nothing to show for it. 
and it was with an extremely heavy heart that I came to terms with the next lesson, one that I'm still struggling to keep in mind. It's okay to shelf projects. Not everything you make is gonna come to fruition, and if you try to force it, you're gonna end up burnt out and tired with a shitty product that nobody likes. Take your time. If something isn't turning out the way you want it to, put it down for a while. Work on something else and come back with a fresh mindset. Not only are you going to do a much better job of keeping your own sanity, but you'll come out the other side with a much better product. I'm going to be putting that old explorer script in the description of this video so you guys can see what I mean. With my motivation significantly weakened, I decided to take my own advice. I decided it's time to shelf my big video in favor of learning the skills necessary for another one. That's right, this is when I decided to learn SFM. I knew I wanted to make a tutorial for Expert MBM, since looking for one on YouTube gave basically no results. On top of that, making TF2 content is a pretty good recipe for getting noticed. The TF2 community isn't large, but it's pretty tight-knit, so once you're noticed, you tend to really take off. That's right, I specifically made TF2 content to farm internet fame knowing the community would propel me and you idiots all fell for it, suckers! I secretly actually hate the game and everything about it and I would never dare play it more than I need to. Hey, uh, uh, can could we, could we get that off the- Off to work I went, going through the Valve tutorials and learning the basics of the program. The first video I ever made with SFM is this one, where I recreated Duel by Bird. It's, uh... <laughs> Let's just say it's rough around the edges, but for a first project, I'm pretty happy with it. And with the basics out of the way, I had nothing stopping me from working on my big project. But could I really handle it? After spending weeks on the last script only for it to fail, was it even worth committing my time to? Even after learning SFM just to make this video, I didn't really believe that I could do it, and I hesitated about even writing the script. And so, I cut myself a deal. I knew that I wanted to insert a few large SFM skits into the video at various points, so the deal was this. If I could create one of the most in-depth SFM segments that I needed to finish the video, that would be proof to myself that I had what it takes to make it. A full month of hard work later and I had managed it. The scout section was done. Not the whole thing, mind you. Just the one SFM. This, like, 30 second clip? This took me a full month to make. Animation is fun, guys! It's a pretty good idea, in theory. Get the most difficult thing out of the way to convince yourself to get into the project. The rest of the project didn't turn out well, though I'd have been stuck with a useless SFM. And sure, I'd be happy with it, but I wouldn't really be able to do much with it. In spite of that, I still think this can teach a valuable lesson. Don't be afraid to jump right into a big project. Planning and thinking about bigger projects is good, but you shouldn't be afraid to just hop right in, either. A quote I like to remember that illustrates this perfectly is... Creating art is like jumping off a cliff and building your wings on the way down. If you want to only start when you know exactly how to get everything right, you never actually will. You never really know what you're doing until after you've started doing it. If you spend all your time planning, you'll never actually get anything done. Sometimes the best way to tell if you're going to be interested in or capable of seeing something through is to just start. Certainly better than what I've been doing for the past year. Anyway, I pressed onwards to write for this new video. I, again, didn't put too much effort in trying to have a point or a plot for this one since it's just a tutorial. I did make a much stronger effort to put my personality and sense of humor into it, though. If I can't even read the script without getting bored and wanting to do something else instead, then it's not a good script. I really tried to make sure that there was room for jokes, small and large, spoken and edited, all over the place. I also wanted to make sure that while I was reading the script, before I even got to recording anything, I could visualize exactly what I wanted editing-wise. I definitely didn't want to just stare at Vegas and not know what to do like last time, so many of the SFM skits were floating around in my head before I even started. These were just some of the tricks I had up my sleeve this time for keeping myself from giving up part way, and believe me, they helped a lot. Another one was only recording the lines for one section at a time. I'm not sure if you can tell, but all of the sections in that video were recorded weeks apart from each other as I finished them. I like to think it's not that noticeable, at least. This sounds like a weird thing to do, but trust me, only looking at two minutes of timeline to put together at a time, instead of 40 minutes, does wonders for keeping you engaged. I'm using that same trick right now for this video, in fact. There's a few other smaller tips, but these are the really big ones. 
point is that I had a lot more motivation this time. For a while. And then at about this point here, I started to burn out a bit. I continued to push through until about here, when I was suddenly invited by my partner to play Left 4 Dead 2 with them. We'd be playing with a few friends, but this time it was with a catch. This time, we'd be playing with an interesting mod pack that they had put together. The results are, uh... Oh my god. Why is this just a car? Hey, it's a Dodge Charger Charger. Bruh, this man is made uh, out of Invincible. Strongest material known to Earth, Invincible. Shit! Goofy, no! <laughs> Please help! Goofy, come on. Let me help. Oh, they're saying that fucking <laughs> You could just shoot him, you know. Hey, okay, I, 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 my, my tactics are unorthodox, but I get results. <laughs> Dies. <laughs> Dies immediately. <laughs> that. It was a ton of fun, and I'm glad I recorded it too, because it taught me another lesson. It is okay to work on more than one thing at once. I know it seems counterintuitive, it feels like you'll never get anything done that way. But trust me, just because you're trying to work on a big project doesn't mean you shouldn't work on anything smaller at the same time. Yes, you're splitting your resources between multiple projects, but it does wonders for keeping you from burning out. Finishing a project, even a quick and easy one, gives you a huge push in terms of energy for working. It took me about two weeks to make the soldier section, even though it's super simple. The push from making this one video and having fun with it got me from here to here in about five days. Five days. And this is the most intensive part of the video. Do not underestimate the push you can get from making even just one smaller video. It helps. That said, I did start to burn out again after that, and I didn't really touch the video in terms of editing for almost three weeks. As a side note, that's why the last three classes feel pretty phoned in editing-wise. I was super burnt out by that point. But, in the end, I did it! I made a good video. At least, I think I did. The view count, like ratio, and comments seem to agree with me anyway. And I am proud of what I made. Flaws and all. I remember the happiest I felt about the video was the day I put it out. I sent it to someone I had just started talking to semi-recently because I wanted their opinion on it. I was talking with them fairly often, so it felt pretty comfortable to do. And after a few minutes, they just said, Pride, this video is kinda poggers. And it was like everything was worth it. That euphoria, that feeling of having made something great, I want to feel that again. And then I asked myself, what next? I reanimated the second episode of Duel, and that was pretty fun, but in general I was at a loss for where to go with my channel, and I stayed that way for months. At first I told myself, eh, hey, I'll take a break for school, but then winter break came and I still did nothing. And then the next semester came around and I told myself the same lie, another break for school. And then the summer came around. Finally I was gonna work and work and work, and I just... didn't. I tried starting on another MVM video, but the creative juices just didn't flow in the same way. I wasn't as passionate, I couldn't get as into it as last time, and eventually I decided to bench it for now so that I could work on other things. I wanted to get an apartment with my partner so I needed this channel off the ground, but there was no guarantee that such a big undertaking would be finished in time. The major problem really was my investment. For my big MVM video, I was pushing myself to prove, to myself, my friends, and the rest of the world, that this time I could make something that people would love. I was gonna make something that would explode, that everyone would tell me I did great on, and I would be respected and loved, and my girlfriend would come back, and I'd be famous, and my parents would love me. See, the problem here is, counterintuitively, that I actually succeeded. I did make something that people love, it did get me thousands of subs, my parents, uh, but see, what reason do I have to make a video matching that scope now? I accomplished what I wanted, and now there isn't as much of a reason for me to do it again. Of course I want to on some level, but the drive just isn't strong enough right now. Plenty of people I've told this to have said, you should do it to improve, to be better than you were, and yeah, I'm sure a lot of people can do that, but... Not me, at least not right now. I'd rather branch out and do something completely different this time. 
And then, finally, after months and months, it hit me. The clouds parted, the heavens opened, and it was bestowed upon me. The final lesson. In his infinite wisdom, God told me, Not every project needs to be that big, you fucking idiot. This sounds so simple, but of course not everything needs to be amazing in scope with animation and months of editing and audio mixing. I got so caught up in trying to be like the people I respected that I completely burnt myself out. Of course I want to be like the channels that I love, my biggest inspirations, but that doesn't mean I need to have that insane production all the time. I'll go back at some point and make a sequel in the same style, animation and all, but for right now I'm just gonna chill a bit. The thing that burnt me out so much was all the SFM segments. Animation takes time and is, fun fact, pretty hard. But that's just the thing, I don't have to do that if I don't want to. Or can't for some reason. Don't force yourself into a super narrow style of content, you'll regret it later. And so we arrive at the current day. These lessons took a lot of time for me to come to grips with, but I think they're valuable lessons to learn. There is one final thing that I've learned, and I'd like to share the solution with you here. For the longest time, I didn't want anyone or anything to come between me and my creative vision. I didn't want my fans to expect anything from me, and I didn't want to feel like I needed to deliver anything substantial. In my mind, that was the best way to make sure I delivered quality content every time. If I work at my own pace, I'll come out with something good, right? Well, recently I realized that this is not a good approach, and this mostly boils down to one thing that I'm sure you can all guess from my upload schedule. If I'm left to work at my own pace, it quickly becomes apparent that my own pace is not doing any work. On top of that, I want to move into an apartment with my partner, like I said, and to do that, I'm gonna need a decent sum to help with rent, which brings me to, you probably guessed it was coming, I'm announcing a Patreon. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are you really going to come back from not making anything for almost a year and ask people for money? I'm really counting on you guys to keep me on track here. I don't have any rewards set up yet, but I want to discuss that with the people stupid enough to patron me. What rewards should be, what tiers I should have, those are things I want to have decided by the people who are directly affected by them. I do know that my patrons are going to get at least semi-regular updates on what I'm working on so they can kick my teeth in if I start slacking off again. I can't, nor do I want to, allow myself to keep slacking the way I was. I want to make videos that people love and with you guys' support and some pushing I think I can do it. That said, I completely understand if some people are reluctant to support me just off me saying I'm back. If you want to wait a bit to see if I can deliver on what I've promised, I don't blame you. We'll see how long it takes me to get my next video out. Hopefully I can deliver the content you guys want, and at a rate we can all be happy with. God, is that really where I ended the script? With no real outro? Ah, fuck it. Here, you guys can have an explosion effect. <laughs>